It's common in our applications to need to send out emails, but when we're doing local development, we really don't want to be sending emails out to the users in our database or whatever it is that we have to be testing with. So fortunately, there's a very handy tool called SMTP for Dev that helps us out with that for local development. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at sending email using SMTP, but not actually sending it out and letting it be intercepted by SMTP for dev. So take it yeah. away. This is a tool that I used to use way back in the day when it was, I guess, this older version that they're referring to here uh, that was a Windows-only GUI version up on CodePlex originally. And that was a, a little application that would sit in your system tray and it would intercept or it would listen on port 25 locally for SMTP messages to come in. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised today when I went to go and look at this or find this again, once I eventually remembered it was called SMTP for dev. Um, I found that it's actually been kind of rewritten and is now cross-platform and available for everywhere the .NET runs. So that's pretty cool. And uh, let's just take a look at what it takes to install it. So they have that up on their wiki here for the on the GitHub page. And you can actually, if you're running .NET Core 3.1 or greater, if you have that SDK installed, it's just .NET. I can just copy that in. But .NET tool installs, installing that global tool. And it's already installed. I did that already. And then you just run SMTP for dev. And the first time you run this, it's actually going to, uh, you'll, if you're on Windows, you're probably going to get the Windows firewall prompt asking you to allow that traffic through. Um, it's just listening locally, I think, by default, I hope. Uh, but you can just hit OK, and then it'll run the app. And it is sitting here listening on port 25. And I can go look at, they instead of having a Windows UI, they actually built a nice little UI here in um, as a web interface. So that's how they were able to make it cross-platform. Um, so that's installing SMTP for dev. Let's take a look at how we would actually send uh, an email to that. So I'm just going to create a new console app here. A new console, like we do sometimes. Uh, but there's a package I like to use called MailKit for sending email. It kind of works around some of the limitations of like the built-in SMTP client. It wasn't or is, I think it's still around in, um, in .NET, but this is just better. So that's what I use these days. So I'm going to do .NET add package. Actually, did I get that right? Yes, .NET add package. I'll just copy it. Add that here, and I'll open that up in Visual Studio Code. Oh, if that's running, I'm going to fire up SMTP for dev again in the background. I'll just let that run. I know that I'm going to need to make this async. And I happen to have the code here for sending out an email using MailKit. How convenient. You should have such a thing available to you. Extremely convenient. Uh, oh. That used the wrong, did I install the wrong thing? Mime kit or mail kit, I keep getting those two confused. It's using. Yeah. Which one did I install? I did install mail kit. I don't know why I'm getting prompted to. Oh, maybe that's the namespace that that's the confusing. <laughs> And, okay, so I've used, imported all the usings that I need here. And let's just walk through what it's doing. So we create a mail message and we add who it's from to, or who's who it's from. And the nice thing about doing this local testing through a fake SMTP server is that none of this needs to be an actual email address that works since it won't actually be sending it out. A subject, and then my favorite part always of using uh, SMTP libraries is this body builder that we get to create. <laughs> uh, 
and then we just build up some HTML body for the message. And uh, this is where the we need these settings here for being able to send it to this local fake SMTP server. Uh, there's this the socket options we're going to set to none. Uh, the other options are SSL on connect or start TLS. A few different options that are going to be specific to the SMTP server that you're connecting to. Uh, but in this case, we do none. And we connect to localhost is the, the name of the, the host and port 25. And then we just send the email. So I should be able to now do .NET run here. And magic should happen in theory. So we won't really see anything happen here. It just ran. Uh, but what happened to SMTP? It said it there was a session here and it received a message from system to system at test.com to dave at dave.com. And the cool thing is if we go to that UI that they provide, we can actually see the message right here. So I can click on it and I can see my message. Hmm. You can inspect the headers. You can see the different parts of the message, view the source. Really, really handy for uh, testing your mail sending locally. And you can it will even notify you uh, if you have this open. It'll give you a notification that there's a message available. And of course, we can come and delete them. And you can see all the sessions that came through while you were testing. It's pretty great stuff. I really like what they've done with this. It's a big improvement from the, the V2 version, which was really handy. Uh, but this is just a, a really nice evolution of that testing tool. Mm -hmm. I really like that it ensources a .NET tool. So it's mm -hmm. super easy to use and run now. And cross platform. Yeah. So it works on Mac and Linux and Windows. As an afterthought, yeah. <laughs> So that's it for today. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. Remember to like, comment, and share, and try not to put all of your likes and comments against the test server. You can put those against the real world YouTube server. Uh, and we'll see everybody on next week's episode. Bye. Bye.